One, two, three, open. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Nothing says the future food like crickets. What on earth am I gonna do with this? I've caught some as a kid, but I've never eaten one in my life. They're rich in protein, healthy fats, minerals, and fiber. Plus, they're everywhere. Forward-thinking chefs across the globe have been finding interesting ways to use them in their dishes. And tonight, you also have that option. Playing with lots of mushrooms today. Today, I'm going to focus on a savory dish. Oh, these are gorgeous. My goodness. I need to show the judges that I'm just as good of a cook as I am with desserts. I'm not throwing much in my basket in the pantry. I'm gonna use as many of those mystery box ingredients as possible. No, I'll do Lincoln Berry. I actually like mystery box challenges, the fact that they limit the ingredients that I can use. Sometimes I get too crazy when you give me all the ingredients. All of these ingredients are so interesting. These are not ingredients you're gonna find in most people's grocery carts. These are a little bit unusual, and they do take a tremendous amount of skill and understanding in order to master them. And it takes a very important word, creativity. Very interesting. I don't even know if you can eat it. I don't even know like what half these ingredients are. Okay, so maybe we're gonna scratch that idea. At least I recognize the mung bean noodles. I know that I can use that as a base of my dish. I do recognize squab, but I've never worked with it. But I'm gonna treat it as if it was a tiny little chicken. <laughs> squab, I think, is particularly challenging to work with because it is such a lean protein. Unlike chicken, it has a very strong flavor. So it could be overpowering. You have to know how it behaves. You have to create that perfect balance. I don't want to go salmon. I feel like that's too easy. I want to use something that I've never worked before. I'm here to push myself. I'm back to win. I'm making a Filipino-inspired soup using this squab. It's called a sotonghon. Anytime I was sick as a kid, my mom used to make me sotonghon. It's basically our chicken noodle soup. My mom was so important to learning everything that I know about cooking. And that's one of my fondest memories of her is just sitting in the kitchen while she cooked and taste the things that she's cooking. I have to be creative with this challenge. I'm even using the bones of this squab to make my broth. Never cooked squab before, but I'm confident in my skills. I think I can do it. Today I'm making salmon and hummus. Very simple. I'm cooking this dish because it reminds me of my mother's favorite way to cook salmon. My mother is very important because my father and I had a troubled relationship, and in his eyes, men are not supposed to cook. And my subtle rebellion was spending time watching mom cook and taking interests in what she was doing versus doing the things that I'm supposed to do. So her and I bonded, and now my mother's the reason I cook. My mother is my hero, and any chance I get to pay homage, I do. I'm making a stewed okra with tomatoes, pickled wild rice, a beef balsamic gastrique, a smoked hummus puree, and I'm making a bug to wheel. It's super quiet today. Everyone's just focused on what they're doing. I'm putting out what my fellow cooks are putting out is like a finale dish every single time. It is nuts. The level of intensity is extremely high. Everything can go wrong. I just have to keep my mind in the game. I've never had this much competition before. Never. It's absurd at this point. Like, everyone is so good, so being able to stand out and even just survive is a real challenge. Andre, how are you doing? Good. What are you doing? So I'm making a salmon with a crusted cricket. Then I have a pumpkin curry sauce going yes. on here. Then I'm going to grill these Nepalis. Yes. I'm definitely using the spices that I know with the ingredients that I don't know, especially the cactus and the crickets. I'm really stepping out of my zone right now. The risk is not getting that balance right, but I'm going for it. Originally, I came back to show my creativity and boost myself, but my perspective changed when my wife said she's pregnant. Now I'm here for my little baby. 
I want to win it for them, and I don't want to work at the hospital anymore. Even though it's a great job, I should be in food. It's always going to be tasty, but I really want to have a great presentation and an inviting feeling to this dish. I can't wait to see what you're going to give us. Thank you, Chef. Chef Claudio. Christopher, so what's your dish? I'm doing a variety of mushrooms. I've got some morels here that I just braised. I've got some mushrooms confiting in the oven. I'll also be frying a little bit of enoki, so it's almost like a mushroom garden. And then I'm going to plate my fried bugs on it, so it's almost like they're walking down a garden. The judges want to see how well we can use the theme of the challenge today. And I know I want to make crickets the star of my dish. So I'm trying to recreate a moment from my childhood when I was on recess, and I would be trying to catch these crickets with my friends. But unfortunately, I sort of just did a forest-themed dessert last week, and I don't want the judges thinking that I'm just a one-trick pony. But I'm going to take the risk anyways, because I really think this is a great way to show off the cricket. All right, I'll leave you to it. Thank you, Chef. Hey there, Andrew. Hey, Chef, how are you? Very well indeed. What are you working on? Right now, I'm making my cricket to wheel and I'm doing a cricket in walnut crumble. Is cricket something that is relatively new for you? Absolutely new to me. I ate more crickets today than I've ever eaten in my life. Crickets are like roasted corn nuts. They're just crunchy, roasty bugs. <laughs> that sounds like you like crickets. We're gonna make full use of the crickets today. And how important is sustainability in your culinary beliefs at your restaurant? In my restaurant, we waste nothing. Anytime we have discards, they're all saved. We make our stocks, soups, chowders. And that's all a part of sustainability. Absolutely. Well done, and I look forward to trying your dish. Thank you, Chef. Just trying to, like, temper the chocolate so it doesn't melt all over the place. I just took it off, and I'm going to add a little bit more chocolate. And once it stops melting, then that means it's tempered, and then I can add my crickets in. Tempering chocolate is a huge time waster. You have to pay attention to it. And I'm getting behind on all my other components. Am I going to have enough time? I don't know, but I don't want to play it safe, so this is what I got to do. Taya is using the chocolate mork to cover her crickets. That's the risky. If it pays off, though, it's going to be delicious. We're making some chocolate crickets. At least they're dead now. The one element I'm worried about is the cactus. I've never cooked with it before, and I'm hoping that it gives a nice texture. I'm just applying pressure without burning my hand. I got those grill marks I wanted. Oh, yeah. Let's flip it. Things are on par right now, but I'm just worried about getting a good cook on my swab. It's such a small piece of meat. I'm just cooking the breath. I got to really focus my attention on that. Ten minutes! You only have ten more minutes left! I am trying to make sure that I don't burn everything. The reason you see me running around for the first 50 minutes is so that I can spend the last 10 minutes calm, plating with focus. I have everything on the go right now. That burnish. The plating is super important to me. I really want to make sure that it tells a story. Walking through these trails in the forest where there's stumps and growth and things are overgrown and the crickets are around the stump. This is not a clean situation. So I'm trying to work that in my brain onto the place. <laughs> I'm spending so much time cutting these mushrooms and making sure they're the right size. And I need to find a way to plate this dish. If everything doesn't come together where it should be, the plate's just going to look like a mess. This could be a disaster. <sighs> it's so important to cook with your heart in this competition. And my heart went into this. I hope the judges see that. So I made a play on a Filipino classic. It's called Sotanghon. Traditionally, it's made with chicken, and today I use the squab. I also use mung bean and a cricket squab skin chicharron on top of the noodles, and also the enoki mushrooms. You really used a lot of those sustainable ingredients. I like the way it looks. The only thing I would have done differently here is I would have sliced the squab and placed it on top of the noodles, because right now it's drowning in a hot stock, and you can see that it's overcooking. Yeah. Wow. It's another knockout from you. I love the fact that the squab is only seasoned with salt because it allows the other flavors to really shine. 
The noodles, perfectly cooked. The broth, so many layers in it. Delicious, thank you. Thank you, chef. Noodle soup is the ultimate comfort food. 100%. Do mm -hmm. you think I'm gonna get that ultimate comfort? I hope so, chef. Okay. Oh, I would say more than pleasantly surprised. I like it because it's very clean, and using the pressure cooker was a fantastic idea. You're able to extract all that flavor. Overall, I like the effort. This is the food for the future, and your future is bright. Thank you, Chef. I feel so good right now. I got to stick to my roots, and they loved the flavors. I'm pretty proud right now. I did a pan-seared salmon tempered squash blossoms, some puffed wild rice, sweet potato puree, and I dipped the crickets in the chocolate. It's kind of like the mud in a forest. You know, you've got little bugs in the mud. I think this plate looks terrific. It's certainly restaurant-quality plating. It looks inviting. It looks colorful. And what was the cook you're hoping for on this beautiful piece of salmon? I'm hoping for a medium rare. Is that what I'm going to see here, Taya? I sure hope so. Well, let's see. If I overcooked this salmon, I'm basically buying my one-way ticket out this door. Look at that. That is as close to medium rare as I think you could have gotten it. That salmon tastes as if it was just pulled out of the ocean. It is so fresh, so clean, and so natural. That sweet potato sauce, it makes the perfect backfoil for a salmon dish like this because it adds that next layer of sort of creamy mouthfeel. It's a cook that shows incredible promise. Thank you. I've never had chocolate-covered crickets on salmon. I would never combine chocolate and salmon, but I'm glad you did. It's a really great balance. It's unexpected. The one thing I have to comment on is the fish, I believe, is under-seasoned. You could use a little more sea salt. Definitely not perfect, but bold. Thank you. I really need to win one, or like get top three or something. I'm hoping that this dish will do that. Christopher, you're up next. I was inspired by the cricket. The puree on the bottom is a spring onion and pea puree. On top, you have a medley of mushrooms. We have braised morels, confit chanterelles, and fried enoki. Great plating. Thank you, chef. It's playful, but it also is reminiscent of your last dessert presentation. The flavors are very bold. The wonderful savory pea, the little spring onion. There is something in there that has a real umami hit to it. It might be, be morel soil. Ah, okay. And how did you make that? Olive oil, morels, flour, and ground cricket to bring some nuttiness. It is a beautiful presented dish, lots of great flavors, incredible technique. And I hope that you are able to continue to create exciting food like this for us on an ongoing basis. Thank you, chef. Andre, you're up next. I have a cricket crusted salmon with a pumpkin curry sauce, grilled Napoli's cactus, and baked okras. I like the presentation. What's in the pumpkin sauce? The mustard, salted cod caviar, and curry. There's a very intense flavor. Something's making it very salty. It might be the caviar. Did you also apply salt to the sauce? Yes, I did. It's a common mistake. I'm going to try it and see how it all works together. I like it. But I wish there was another element to it, something citrusy. I think overall the dish is on the right path, but you need to really control your seasoning. I will, chef. Well, I think the cactus really went well with the curry because it's got that silky, smooth, sticky to it, and the curry really gives a nice balance to it. The salmon gets a tad overcooked. You cover the salmon with the cricket to make it crispier. 
but you would need a lot of crickets in there to make this crispy. If you put lots of seeds, lots of nuts in there, and then take the cricket, add it on top, it would have been a better solution. Overall, it's quite a tasty dish, but it needs a little bit more. Please go back. I don't feel amazing, I feel okay. I was going for simplicity, but I feel like I still should have pushed it a little more. Andrew, please bring up your dish. I want to win this one real bad because these flavors I put on the plate are representative of what my mom has taught me. And she's the inspiration for why I cook in the first place. Today I've prepared for you cricket crusted salmon and chickpea puree. I pickled the wild rice in fennel pollen and the grainy mustard. And I made a beet cricket to wheel to garnish the plate with. The presentation is really terrific. It is eye-catching, colorful, intriguing. So I'm delighted to see that you've been able to up your plating game. Thank you, chef. The cook on the salmon, what are we hoping for? Medium rare. Let's see if you achieve that. Looks good to me. Spot on. Thank you, chef. It's a delight to eat. It really is. The salmon is so very moist and flavorful. And your hummus has a nice Middle Eastern, North African flavor to it. Yeah. And just that hint of smokiness. Really well executed, and you should be proud of yourself. Thank you, Chef. I was very happy with this dish. It's a beautiful dish. Thank you. Really well executed. That hummus is so light. I taste your heritage in it. I taste the drive that you have right now, the focus. I'm here to win, Chef. Head back to your station. Thank you, Chef. I just hope that my mom would be proud. I get Becky's fallen apple dessert, a dessert that's haunted me and terrifies me. And I'm going to do a spiced apple compote, a vanilla bean panna cotta, and then a poached apple with it as well. OK. The reason I'm choosing this dessert is to face my fears. There was a moment when Chef Claudio cut into Becky's apple panna cotta. Let's dig in. And there was two pine nuts in there representing the seeds. This is one of the most original desserts I've had anywhere. That was the exact moment that I knew Becky was the next master chef. No pressure. OK, we are in a good place, I think. It's there. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, hustling, hustling. What dessert is inspiring you right now? It's Trevor's dessert. I'm amping up this chocolate with a little creme de menthe. Oh. A little bit of peppermint extract and baked meringue. Oh my gosh. So are you usually a dessert guy? Like, I'm you not like a making? dessert guy, no? no. Hey, I don't think that, Andrew, because you won a dessert challenge. So I don't believe one word of that at all, <laughs> OK? So don't be modest, just Thank do it. I'm agreeing yourself. with Alvin here, because if you're making a brownie, this is, in my opinion, the only way to make a brownie. Over a double boiler. That's right. Best, chewiest, fudgiest brownie ever. That's what we want. Awesome. Thank you. OK, good luck. Take care, guys. Yeah. You can always add more. I want to emulate Becky's fallen apple, but I want to use a real apple here. So I poach half of an apple that I hollowed out in apple cider. In the finale, one of the comments that the judges made to Becky was, it would have been cool if she had like a glaze over her panna cotta to make it look red. I want to apply that feedback to my dessert to show the judges that I'm listening, that I'm trying to learn, and I'm trying to push myself to elevate as much as I can. So I melt down some sugar, a little bit of red food coloring, and pour that caramelized sugar over my apple to give it that red color that Becky's lacked in the finale. OK, what am I doing? I'm just trying to make like a very thin candy apple. I want that sugar to coat it, give it a little bit of crunch, but I don't want it to be sticky. Scratch that. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm messing around with the glaze, and it's not looking good. Get off there. I can see why Becky didn't put the glaze on. Yeah. This could ruin the whole texture of the dessert. I'm worried about the whole thing. This is not my style dessert, but I'm going to try really, really hard. In order for me to pull this off, I need to make sure that this glaze sets. If that doesn't set, there's no winning this challenge. Oh, I hope that's good. Come on, baby. Hey. Timing is everything in this challenge. I have quite a few components to get done. My meringue is in the oven. There's 10 minutes left, and I need to get my brownie done. That's going to be delicious. Oh, shoot. 
Oh, no. Andrew has just pulled out a tray out of his oven. It looks burnt to me. There is a lot of smoke. That's a crucial mistake. My meringue is toast, literally. Burnt toast. Mm. I have some meringue left. I'm going to have to pivot into a torched meringue. God, I love it. I did a really good reimagination of Becky's dessert, but it's not flashy. I hope the judges connect with my inspiration around the dish. I was inspired by Becky's finale dessert, a dish I know well. So on the bottom of the dish, we have smoked caramel apple compote, a spiced panna cotta, breadcrumbs, and then instead of the panna cotta apple, I poached it in apple cider. And then this palate cleanser is Granny Smith apples, lemon, and fresh ginger. So more apples, so it's almost like a little precursor to the dessert. Yeah, exactly. Some good news and bad news. The flavor is very fresh, very clean. It does what a palate cleanser is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. The texture, though, reminds me a little bit of baby food. It's okay. very grainy. Yeah. I wish you would have strained it. Yeah. But here is the main event. I quite like the presentation. It is rustic, but also sophisticated. Thank you. You know, I recall that Becky tried to put a glaze over her apple, and she failed doing that. The glaze on this apple is perfect. Are you trying to outdo Becky? I think Becky's an incredibly talented pastry chef. I think she'd be proud of the effort. I like the fact that you are facing all of your culinary fears. Yeah. But when I cut through this apple, I want an apple that's been cooked right through, but not too soft. Mm -hmm. Oh. See how I'm struggling to cut through that? Mm -hmm. What happens with apple skin is that it gets tough. Yeah. The inside looks quite tender, but I wish you would have totally peeled the apple, poached it. Yeah. You really captured the essence of an apple. I love all the components, the spicing in it, the cinnamon, the cloves. I think you were deeply inspired by Becky. I like where you were going, but there's a few little missteps. Just taste things as you go. Yeah. Andy, I love the way that you've taken Becky's dish and turned it upside down, inside out. I think it looks very eye-catching, especially with that shiny apple there. The wonderful fresh flavors of the apple come through nice and strong. I like the fact that you've poached the apple. The only disappointment, it's that skin. It's very difficult to eat and cut into. And then instead of the stewed diced apples, I think you could have done the same, but with beautiful wedges of ah. peeled apple. And I just think it would have elevated the presentation mm -hmm. and given a little bit of a texture change to the overall dessert. Yeah. I think I honored the dish. I think I honored myself, but this apple skin could take me down. Christopher, please bring up your dessert and your palate cleanser. I'm very nervous. I took a huge risk, and I'm just wondering, is this enough? So today's inspiration comes from Eric Chong's season one dessert, this Asian banana split. My palate cleanser is a frozen cocktail. It's a blood orange and yuzu sorbet. Around it is a little bit of limoncello cream. Let me cleanse my palate first. That blood orange flavor, it's just Amazing. <laughs> I know this dish is gonna be delicious, but is it as good as everybody else? Today I made a dark chocolate hot fudge brownie with tahini ice cream, pomegranate molasses, with mint gastrique and manuka soaked fruit. And my palate cleanser is lemon granita. Very clean, very simple. I'm gonna waste no time and tuck into the palate cleanser. Yes, chef. Simple, solid, and straightforward. It does the job. Yeah. Presentation. It is eye-catching. I find it quite charming. Almost dandy. Thank you. And this is a pomegranate molasses. Pomegranate molasses with a mint gastrique folded uh, uh, nearby. Mmm. Great texture. That is soft and tender, and the chocolate flavors, as fudgy as it gets. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Nice Thanks. incorporation of the mint with that chocolate, too. Thank you. The 
tahini ice cream really is rich and creamy and decadent. The two flavors, I think, work very well together. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Chef. I like the Middle Eastern touches, the tahini and the ice cream, and then the pomegranate syrup. Oh, the brownie, nice and moist, crispy on top. Never had a teeny ice cream before. Good contrast. Yeah. You got the richness coming, of course, from the sesame, but it's not sweet, which is good. <laughs> you got the acidity with the pomegranate syrup, gives it an extra layer of flavor. So I like the combinations. Very smooth, but very safe. Great work, buddy. Awesome. I chose pandan and siphon. I took pandan because it's a childhood comfort flavor of mine. Pandan is a really subtle flavor. It's a little bit grassy, a little bit herbal, but it's got this very rich, creamy, robust flavor. Today, I'm doing a bit of a tropical dessert. It's gonna be a plated dessert. I'm making a pandan forest with pandan espuma. Espuma is a foamed, warm component. And I'm also gonna be doing a pandan micro sponge with the siphon. When Andrew won with a dessert last week, I really wanted to bring my dessert game this week. It is something a little bit different, and I hope the judges will be impressed. 10 minutes, only 10 minutes left! Okay, what do I need to do now? It's hot in this kitchen. I am sweating. I'm calling my dish into the ravine because when I was a kid, we had a ravine behind my parents' house, and I would always go down there and walk around in the woodsy areas, you know, play with sticks and branches. And it was just a big part of my childhood growing up. I've got 10 things to put on this plate, and if I mess up even one of them, I had to start all over. I'm making caramelized milk logs, so it looks like there's branches and dead fallen trees around. And then mushrooms, I'm gonna start with the espuma on the bottom. I just need to block everything else out and just focus on what's in front of me. I'm nervous because my dessert is high concept, and if it doesn't translate over to the judges, then I just have a mess on a plate. My words were siphon and pandan. I would call this dish into the ravine. I used the siphon two ways. I've done a pandan coconut espuma on the bottom, and also used it to make a steamed micro sponge on top. There's meringue mushrooms for some crisp, a pistachio crumb, some caramelized milk logs, and then just some red currants and yellow currants for some acidity. Wow. I, I, I must say, I am lost for words. It's so pretty that I don't want to eat it. There's moss, there's mushrooms, there's soil. This is so beautiful, but does it taste as good as it looks? I love the soil, and the pandan is definitely there. And you had to put it in strong. It is very light and delicate, and you handled it well. All the flavors, they come together. The crispiness, a bit of saltiness from the soil even, it goes very well with the pandan. This dish, to me, I I'm lost for words, as I said. And that doesn't happen to the demon chef. I'm emotional, that says it all. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Good job. I think that today is gonna be finally my day to win. Andy, how you doing? Chef, I'm doing all right over here. So you had first pick. Do you think the carrots are the easiest vegetable to showcase? I think that it was the one that I had by far the most experience with. I cook with carrots all the time. What are you making? I'm gonna do some carrot ginger stuffed dumplings. I've got a carrot red curry with a crispy duck skin. And then I'm gonna do this delicious honey brown butter roasted carrots with Sicilian pistachios on there to make it look almost like a mossy log. I cook comfort food at home, so this is not the style food that I cook. So I'm just gonna do my best to be more delicate. So not only did you get first choice, yeah. you picked carrots for yourself, you also made the decision on who gets what vegetable. Yeah. Who are you trying to undermine? Everybody. <laughs> Everyone's amazing at this point. It's very hard to trip anybody up. Keep it up. I think you're going in the right direction. Thank you, Chef. 30 minutes left! 30 minutes! Holy smokes, I'm making a lot today. Both Andy and Taya are in exactly the same position. They almost got the title. Their former finalists, they were so close to it, they could taste it. They're both making dumplings. The difference, though, is Taya is making her own dumpling wrappers. Andy has chosen 
to use store-bought dumpling wrappers. You're not gonna get the softness, so you gotta be very careful when you cook it. There's gonna have to be sacrifices, and choosing the pre-made dumpling wrapper is one that I have to make. I hope that judges enjoy the big, bold, Southeast Asian flavors. This could be exceptionally risky. I did a brown butter honey pistachio crumb carrot. In the center, we have red carrot, coconut curry, and on the far end, carrot ginger soy dumpling and fried carrot tops. It's colorful plate of dumplings. It's got some crispy, I assume you've got some pickles in there. So you got a lot going on there. It's very pleasant. When I look at it, I say, wow. Did you make your own dumpling wrap? I did not. Why not? Rush for time, no excuse there. Well, look at the fill. Looks nice. Andy, I'm impressed. You honored the Chinese dumpling. The filling, amazing. I taste the carrots, I taste a lot of the Chinese spices, but not overpowering the carrot, which is essentially the star. This gorgeous looking dish of roasted carrots, it really looks so elegant. So you slow roasted these, intensify the sweetness. Exactly. I love the pistachio carrots, the way they're cooked, beautiful and tender, just with a firm center, coated with that honey, the crackly, crunchy pieces from the pistachio. I would only like to have seen maybe a touch of vinaigrette made from the juiced carrot. It would have just sort of been the crowning jewel. Yeah. That is a class act. Thank you, Chef. I'm gonna try the red carrot curry. The cook on the duck is pretty textbook. It's nicely rested. The carrot gets lost a little bit in that curry. The curry flavors are very powerful. Mm -hmm. I love the placement of three carrot applications on one plate, but I think it needs a little more carrot in the sauce. Otherwise, I think the dish is very smart. Thank you, chef. I don't know if I did enough. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's taking me forever to grate these carrots. I am making a carrot cake spice dumpling with vegan creme en glace. This is what I do for a living, so this is the time that I can showcase my skills. I obviously make dumplings all the time for restaurants, retail. I've also been starting to teach a lot of classes as well, and I'm always pushing the boundaries. And that's what I'm really good at. So I haven't made a dumpling dish yet, and I just really want to pump one out. Hey, May. Hi, Chef Alvin. Tell me what you're doing. I'm actually going desserts and dumplings. I love dumplings. So do I. And you are the dumpling queen. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> OK, so I can tell you, a dumpling is my comfort food. My grandmother used to make dumplings all the time, so I remember as a little kid, I would wait for those. So all I can right. tell you, I'm really looking forward to your dumplings. And remember, presentation. Absolutely. Thank you, Chef. May, surprisingly, is also making dessert. She's making dumplings. And in that dumpling is going to be a carrot cake. I like that. So a carrot cake dumpling. That's a beautiful idea, actually. So it'll be interesting to see how she can mimic cream cheese with vegetables. As a cream cheese alternative, she's using tofu and beans. And beans? Yes, tofu wow. and white beans. Today, I really want to stand out because you always have to cook your best dish, or it may be the last dish that you're going to be cooking in this kitchen. I'm blending ackee with almond milk to create an emulsified creme en glace sauce. I'm using the ackee as a kind of an egg replacement to build smooth emulsified texture. Then I'm adding ginger, cinnamon, cloves, allspice. I want to make sure all those beautiful spices come through into the final bite. But it's really stressing me out because it also has to be beautiful and elegant. Creating a plant-based dish is already hard enough. I made carrot cake dumpling, shredded carrots, all the typical carrot spice. The sauce is made with almond milk and ackee. Me. It looks very beige, a bit flat. The color's hiding on the inside. The color is on the inside. There's the color. The flavors are delicious. Beautiful carrot mixture. Really great control of the spices. I do think, though, you could have gone further. Maybe I should have juiced some carrots and used that in the dumpling dough instead. Exactly. Start following your gut. 
Thank you very much, Jeff. Hey, I'm so intrigued and fascinated that you decided to do a carrot cake dumpling. A very clever use of the ackee. The filling and flavors of the dumplings, I think, are spot on. It really had that cake feel to it, slightly sweet, carrot, cinnamony, and the dumpling wrappers are so light and tender. Thank you, Chef. Thank you.